Bleach Dark Souls for the Nintendo DS has got to be one of the most slept on DS games and fighting games in general I've ever seen in my life. Like, granted, it's a Bleach game, and there's not, like, Bleach fans standing on every corner of the world saying, oh my god, this game is good, and there's not that many people who own a DS nowadays. But even then, this game is actually not bad at all. As a matter of fact, I might as well say it's one of the best D DS games, and on top of that, one of the best fighters on the system, which is actually, that's just not really that hard to beat because there's barely any fighters in the DS, but, but I will say this, Bleach Dark Soul is one of the best handheld fighters, and I'm going to say why. Now, mostly this video is just going to be about ranting and whatnot. I'm not going to actually go too deep and in depth on this stuff. I just want to feel like gushing right about now. Wait, I say rant. <laughs> it's gushing more than anything. So, Bleach Dark Souls is a 2D fighter, um, basically similar to, actually there's a lot of 2D fighters out there. I would say Blaze Blue, but Bleach Dark Souls doesn't have that kind of balance like Blaze Blue, the games like Under Night, Guilty Gear, or what have you. Granted, it's on the DS. And you play on a 2D plane, obviously, and you can swap between the foreground and the background, similar to Guilty, um, either Guilty Gear Itsuka or Guilty Gear Dust Strikers. As a matter of fact, those are the only two games I can think of come to mind that has a foreground and a background. There's really gotta be more games I think about doing. But anyway, unlike Guilty Gear Isaka, Bleach Star Souls doesn't suck, and it actually does incorporate the foreground and the background in a unique, uh, good way without having to hinder the gameplay. Plus, unlike Guilty Gear Isaka's case, you can actually, you know, um, automatically move instead of manually move like Isaka did. But anyway, the point is, the game is extremely underrated, and I swear it's hard to like. It's hard to like talk about it unless you don't really know it. But I'm gonna try to get into the know how. So, on, basically, on the main menu, you start off with your modes, and you got story mode to start with, which it has different branching paths. And I'm gonna tell you, the story mode is long. Like, it's not long in a bad way, and you do get some funny character dialogue and stuff like that. You also get like different mini games depending on, on just. Like you collect food, um, you can run around the field. Like, instead of like fighting your opponent, uh, you can beat, you can fight and beat your opponent and like collect like falling food from the sky, get a higher score. And the food swaps between the foreground and the background. And you do it with candy as well. It, it's it's just one big thing. You have to fight your opponent to get the items before they do, because they'll come back up and try to go after it. But now you got some unique character interactions. The story mode is just. It's long, like it's longer than I remember, but it's worth it because it's it's actually like it's pretty much in a visual novel kind of way, and I'm already too deep in the visual novels. Not everybody is, and this is a Bleach visual novel on the DS, so that's kind of like uh, that's a try. But yeah, the story mode's actually pretty enjoyable for those who want, you know, you like that kind of thing. Next, you got arcade mode, and I'm not gonna lie, I don't play arcade mode on this game much. I love my arcade modes, but I have yet to actually play all the way through arcade mode. But it's pretty much your standard arcade mode, like, there's nothing really to talk about. Um, versus mode, self-explanatory, but I will get back to that because I gotta talk about the fires later. Train mode, obvious. Now, you have a um, place called Deck Construction. Deck Construction is pretty much... In the game, you have, like, basically like, cards that boost your attacks, slow your opponent down, um, stop your attacks. Um, it's pretty much like... It's pretty much like... How to describe it? It's like... You can, you can basically buff yourself during the fight. And you also have your, like, your um, attacks and stuff at the bottom of the screen. So you can basically play the game. Well, that's not, that's a lie. You can basically use your supers on the bottom screen without having to actually put in the inputs, which is actually kind of cool, but it's kind of like, it's kind of jarring when you have you know the, you know the inputs and then you just like, oh, well, I could just instantly use the super, but you gotta like go to the touch screen to do it. But I'm getting off track. The deck construction is you actually make your own decks and stuff like that. And there's a bunch of cards in this game. Like, there's more than I can actually describe, but there's like more um, beneficial effects. Um, then you have Urahara Shop, and it's basically the item shop where you can get ga um, picks for your gallery, you can get stuff for the decks, you can basically use in game currency to buy all a bunch of random stuff in the game. Now, for funny, the funny thing about it is, I don't know if you can buy any actual fighters, I don't think you can. Because usually I just play through the story mode and I don't like all the fighters that way. Though, I'm not gonna lie, going through the story mode and locking on the fighters is tough. But you, I think you need a certain amount of currency to even do that kind of thing. Then you get the gallery, and the gallery is freaking huge. Like, it's freaking huge. Like, you get like, um, I'm sorry, I'm stalling here. You get basically 
the artwork you get during the game, you can actually find like character, um, like basically, they basically put a whole a library in this game where you have a terminology page, like a glossary. This, this like glossary is extensive and it's only extensive up to the point where um, Ichigo defeats um, Biafia and what takes place after that because it doesn't go up to the way run car arc because no run cars are even in this game. So basically it goes up from, it basically goes all the way up to when Ichigo um, defeats Biafia. So it has all the terms till then. Basically, like, it basically tells you, oh, this is Ichigo Kurosaki, this is height and weight and stuff like that. Oh, this term is, oh, what's the Zanpak Toe? Yada yada this, yada yada that. And I like the fact that they put that in there. It even puts, you, it even puts like, freaking fighting terms in there. So you know what those fighting terms actually mean. And it's so cool that they stuffed all that in there. They even put a log for one of the filler characters. And they actually put anime original. So basically, if people play this game, they would know that she's not canon to the story. And I actually like that. I wish more games did that. I wish more games actually put freaking glossaries in their games. So, like, you would actually know who these characters are. If you've never played the game before, you can actually rip on the dialogue or, like, you don't know who they are or whatever. But I wish more games did that. And, you know, you get your so-called options and, you know, what have you. But, yeah, I like, I really do like this game. Now, going on to the fighters, there is a bunch of fighters in this game. I haven't counted how many there are, but there are a good amount, especially for a freaking DS game. There are a healthy amount of fighters. I do it, to and they all basically play, mostly play differently. There are some kind of clones, there are some clones like Ichigo and Hollow Ichigo. Actually, Hollow Ichigo doesn't even play that same uh, Ichigo all that much. He's, he's basically a long, long range fighter because he swings his Sangetsu around. Um, but I have to talk about um, even, even like fighters of every size can basically be put into this game. Like, you got Bonnie, you got uh, Bonnie Ganju's boar that basically, like, it's a boar. There's no way it's gonna be the same size as most of the other fighters. And then you got Rinrin, the filler character for the Bount arc, and she's literally the smallest, well, besides Cone, she's the smallest character in the game. You can even play as the Menos Grande, and the freaking Menos Grande, while super slow, it's big as the stage, in the biggest one stage in the game. And you can basically pit Cone against the Menos Grande, and it's, it's funny as hell. I think there's a Shrieker in this game, too, that you can, um, and the Shrieker's about as small as Cone. Actually, no, I don't think the Shrieker's even in the game. Like, I'm not even playing the game right now. I am just gushing for what I know of, and I had to put gameplay in the background. I am sorry, but, yeah, like, the balancing is, like, a terrible issue. It's kind of funny that I could basically fight with Cone against the Minos Grande, although the Minos Grande would easily kick my ass because since Cone's so small, his defense is weak. But he does have, then again, the smaller characters are floaty as hell. But everyone plays pretty much uniquely. Hell, they even added of the filler. They even not filler character. They even added. You remember? Okay, that's not a bit. You remember that kid, right? The kid. Okay, that little um, that uh, bird that Chad saved, and it, it was actually a kid who went to the Soul Society, and he met up that kid again. Started around the start of Soul Society arc. That kid's playable. You know, he's a joke character, but he's actually playable. And I was like. Wow, they really picked everyone that actually had some kind of fighting capabilities. I feel like they could just put Yuzo and Cardian in or Ishin in and been funny. But anyway, the point is, this game has a healthy amount of characters, and it makes some good, just makes some for good stupid action. Like you can fight two, two on two Minos Grandes, and the one thing, I, one thing I do like about this fighting game is that like it's basically like a part. In a way, it's like you can play like four on four. Three on, like, three on, wait, basically, it's like, two on two, three on three battle royale is just basically, like, you have plenty of options. You have, like, a lot of options to work with. But there's not much I can actually say. I just feel like ranting for, like, a couple of bits because this game is actually pretty fun. Like, if it was, like, if it, I felt like if it was, like, it's too good for the DS, you know? I feel like if it was on a different console. I feel like if it was, like, if it was probably on the PS3, or PS4 in the current day, more people will be playing it. Combos on this game basically work as like a traditional 2D fire. Un like, unlike that, you can pretty much use press, like you go from an A, B, C, D format. Now you can't change the manual so you can do auto combos, but basically the game starts off as um, manual. Basically you just press A, B, and C. Some of the games like Blaze, Blue, Guilty Gear, whatnot, just, just fighting games in general. And it's just, it's cool to see that on the DS, even though it's like, Doing quarter circle motions on the gamepad is not hard. It's just a, it's a DS and yeah, it's not it's not really made for that. 
But yeah, I'm sorry. I had to add attack on the attack on this part because I completely forgot to talk about the combos. Like I can't. What's the point of me talking about the fighting game if I didn't add all the fighting stuff? On there? I pretty much just talked about everything around. <laughs> I pretty much just talked about everything around the fighting. Holy crap! They even give you a good. They even give you a good tutorial in the in the beginning of the game, and basically um, shows you the rundown. Like they don't even have a tutorial, like on the menu. They just click the. First, and the sad part about it is you have to go into story mode to learn the tutorial. So that's not really a good thing. They should have at least had like a tutorial mode. They don't. They have, you have to go into story mode to get the tutorial. And it's kind of jank, but you know, I could kind of forgive it. Actually, not really. That's a lie. But yeah, it's kind of jank that they had to put the tutorial at the end of the. I mean, at the, at the beginning of the story mode. It's weird. Like you go in the story mode and then. Yoro Ichi shows up to tell Ichigo, oh man, you remember how to fight Ichigo? Well, don't worry, I'll teach you. You know, you, you know, you do your motions, quarter circle, use all your moves, like, just, you know, whatever. It's really funny, but it's also kind of stupid. Like, why do I have to go to this? That's the one, one of the main problems I have about the game, other than the fact that, you know, the tiny characters can't do crap in this game. I swear, like, Kone and Rin can't do nothing in this game because they're so small and their HP is super low. I mean, if you're someone that smells grinded, you can just stomp them to death. It's just, <laughs> it's just funny to think about. You can just stomp them to death with a Mills grande. It's like, what? But yeah, um, I just wish that tutorial, like a tutorial, was like its own mode. I mean, hell, they get the they get the back option. They don't even need the back option. You can just press O to go back to the menu. But you know, you're already on the menu. You don't even need to go back, unless you want to go back to the opening, which you can just watch in the gallery. But you know, whatever. Other than that. Bleach Dark Souls is a very solid game. 